You might not be panicking, but I'm panicking on these five players for fantasy football. And we are starting it off with player number one. It's going to be Travis Etienne for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And when we look at Travis Etienne, you had to draft Travis Etienne in the first two rounds of your fantasy football drafts. And there was a lot of exciting stuff happening from last season. And honestly, when we look at the start of this season, the part that I do want to talk about with Travis Etienne is it wasn't great, but this last week against Indianapolis, only 12 fantasy points, had a 38% snap share, six attempts for 17 yards. The thing really holding him together in full PPR was the seven targets, six receptions for 43 yards. Now, when we look at this overall snap share, the thing that you're going to lead to see with this backfield is the fact that Tank Bigsby and Travis Etienne pretty much split evenly down the middle. Now, Tank Bigsby had 13 carries to Travis Etienne's overall six. So that is a little bit concerning. Now, Travis Etienne was dealing with the shoulder issue. And he got popped pretty good, had to come out of the game. Tank Bigsby has been a high level waiver wire ad. And Doug Peterson for the last two years has talked about how he wants this to be a running back by committee. They drafted Tank Bigsby with a third round level draft pick last season. You need to be really considering Tank Bigsby. And we kind of need to be panicking at the overall upside because the fact that Travis Etienne hasn't scored more than 15 fantasy points and we're heading into week six is very concerning especially when he's had some tough matchups, but even this last week versus Indianapolis was going to be a really good one. Miami in week one would have been a good one to really have him pop. I know this Jacksonville Jaguars offense has been struggling, but I am 100% panicking on Travis Etienne. You need to be considering what Travis Etienne is going forward. Do you need to look to sell some Travis Etienne? Because when we start to look at some trades for Travis Etienne, the thing that we start to see is like Travis Etienne for Trey McBride, Travis Etienne for Jamal Williams, Travis Etienne for Nick Chubb, Travis Etienne and Dallas Goddard to get to a guy like a Garrett Wilson. Wilson, Jaden Reed, Joe Mixon, Ku, Travis Etienne for Terry McLaurin, Tony Pollard, Evan McPherson, Chris Olave. Like, there's not a lot of great deals. Like, people are even attaching Travis Etienne to get to a CMC. So, I'm not saying that you're going to be able to get ultimate level value and that he's like a sell high. I'm just saying that if you are going to be trying to sell Travis Etienne, it's not looking good. It's not looking good for his overall fantasy football success. My second player we're going to be talking about that I'm panicking on, it's going to be Brees Hall. And we talked about Brees Hall in my video yesterday when we talked through some trade targets. And I think just having this understanding and realistic expectations for Brees Hall is kind of what I want to do talking through this video. Because Brees Hall, if we look at the beginning of the season, 18, 24, 18 fantasy points. And let's not forget, Braylon Allen still was getting run in those games. But in the last two games, three fantasy points and six fantasy points, we have the 69 and 74% snap share. And we do see Robert Sala getting fired for the New York Jets. They're bringing in the interim defensive coordinator head coach, which not to say that that's going to benefit Brees Hall by any stretch of the imagination because the play calling has been pretty bad. But I do think this could revive some of the team's morale, which could get them in better opportunities where they're not having to throw the ball super late. Because let's be clear, Aaron Rodgers does not look like the same guy that he has always been. But when we look at the overall snap share from this last week five game, Brees Hall had 53 snaps, 36 routes run, full four total targets compared to Braylon Allen, who we do like. He played 19 snaps, six routes run, had five carries and two targets. So Brees Hall is still dominating the snap share enough that you have to be looking at Brees Hall as someone that we're definitely panicking on after the last two weeks. But in this certain circumstance, I'm going to tell you, is Brees Hall going to be a sell high target? No, because he's, I argue that he's a buy low target. So you definitely need to be considering Brees Hall if you're trying to buy Brees Hall. Like I said, I know sell high depends on what the value would be. If you're going to be, of course, able to flip like Brees Hall for Alan Kamara or something like that, then I understand. But when we start to look at some trades that are going down for Brees Hall, like Brees Hall and Jacoby Myers or Najee Harris and Drake London, I mean, I lean the Brees Hall side, like Brees Hall for Sam Laporta, James Cook, like that would be a deal. That would be like a sell high trade for Brees Hall. Like if I can get James Cook and Sam Laporta, 100%, give me, you know, let me trade away some Brees Hall. We could even go down to this next one, Brees Hall for Brian Robinson, Garrett Wilson. Give me the Garrett Wilson side there. So it all depends on your league, but I definitely think we need to be panicking on Brees Hall. We need to be hoping for better days going forward. My next player that I am panicking on, it is going to be Tyree Kill for the Miami Dolphins. And I think we've had a lot of people in the community in our YouTube comments talking about, well, hey, Caleb, you know what? Tyree Kill's on a bye in week six. What if Tua Tungavailoa is coming back in week seven? Well, reports are he still really hasn't even entered that official 
concussion protocol yet. And I know he wants to return this season because we've seen in the last, what, week two to week five, 26 face points in week one, only six face points in week two, seven face points in week three, eight face points in week four, and 12 face points. So he finally eclipsed double digit numbers versus New England this last week, nine targets, six receptions, 69 yards. But the touchdown upside just isn't there. They're having to get pretty creative with how they're getting Tyreek Hill the ball in space because Tyler Huntley and Skylar Thompson just haven't been it. And so for me, I continue to see people thinking and relying on the name of Tyreek Hill to hopefully like, Caleb, should I trade Marvin Harrison Jr. for Tyreek Hill? Like that was a question that I got on one of my last videos. And I'm going to respond and say, no, you need to be trading Tyreek Hill right now to be trying to get ultimate level value. Yes, maybe if Tua Tungavailoa absolutely comes back week eight to week nine and balls out, that's going to be great for you. And it's going to be great for Tyreek Hill. But we are still one more concussion away from Tua Tungavailoa having some serious, serious conversations. I honestly, I'm no doctor, so I'm not trying to act like I have the whole concussion protocol down, but I will say it does feel very bleak for Tua Tungavello's rest of career. So if we start to look at trades, like could you trade Tyreek Hill for Bijan Robinson at this point? I know Bijan Robinson's struggling. That's a deal that I would love to kind of look at. Tyreek Hill for Jane Daniels, especially if you need a, a high-end quarterback. We look at Tyreek Hill, Najee Harris for Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs. I know Devontae Adams is missing the third week this week, but convince me, I, I, I would take the Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs side. Tyreek Hill, Debo Samuel for Terry McLaurin, Travis Etienne. That's probably a deal where I do want the Tyreek Hill side, but then like Tyreek Hill, James Cook for Alvin Kamara, Garrett Wilson. Ooh, give me the Alvin Kamara, Garrett Wilson side. So I do think you can sell some Tyreek Hill high based on a lot of people thinking that two is going to be coming back and there are better days ahead. My next player that I'm panicking on, it's going to be Michael Pittman Jr. for the Indianapolis Colts. And the reason that I'm panicking on Michael Pittman Jr. is in these last two weeks, we have seen with Joe Flacco, the resurgence of this passing attack for the Indianapolis Colts. Not only is Michael Michael Pittman Jr. this last week with 14 fantasy points, but the week before that he had 17. We also see Josh Downs, who came off of injury, exceptionally good. We saw Alec Pierce with the deep shot. I'm just worried that when Anthony Richardson comes back, it absolutely demolishes these wide receiver weapons for the Colt. Because we did see, like we said, Michael Pittman Jr. in the first few weeks, seven, five, seven fantasy points. So if I am a Michael Pittman Jr. owner, I'm understanding that the long-term play is not Joe Flacco for the Indianapolis Colts. As much as Joe Flacco looked good last year for the Browns, Browns should have kept him, and is looking good this year for the Colts. What can I do to trade out and go see what my options are going to be going forward? So if we pull up some trades... Like this first deal, Michael Pittman Jr. and CJ Stroud to go get T. Higgins and Justin Fields. I feel very much so confident in T. Higgins than I do in Michael Pittman Jr. Justin Fields, yes, I do have him a few spots behind CJ Stroud, but come on, give me the T. Higgins and Justin Fields side. Michael Pittman Jr. for a Joe Mixon. Give me Joe Mixon 100% of the time. We even got, if we scroll down, like a Michael Pittman for Jalen Waddle, probably wouldn't do that. Michael Pittman for Amari Cooper, I would look to do that or even like add him to like a DeAndre Swift Jerome Ford to get a Kyron Williams. I absolutely love that deal. So, like I said, everything is kind of based on your own overall league based on the overall value that you're going to be able to get. But Michael Pittman Jr. definitely panicking on him going forward, especially with Anthony Richardson as his quarterback. And my last and final panic, and y'all are probably laughing saying, Caleb, you're just overreacting. You're panicking. This guy, I don't think I am. It's going to be Tank Dell for the Houston Texans. And Tank Dell, really, I think the injury that he had last year, he's still recovering from. And I think the explosion just hasn't been there when we're watching Tank Dell. Overall wide receiver 72 this year, which isn't great. And we saw on Sunday, Nico Collins go down with that injury where Nico Collins only played in nine total snaps, had two targets. But when we look at Tank Dell, Tank Dell was actually out snapped by Xavier Hutchison, 46 to 48. He did run more routes. So he ran almost the same amount of routes as Stefan Diggs, but he only did have four targets. This isn't a game without Nico Collins. And so as a guy that we talked all off season about, there's no way that we could have three top 36 level wide receivers in this offense. Someone was going to get the shaft. I think it was always hard for me to imagine that it was going to be Tank Dell because I was like, Stefan Diggs is a newcomer, Nico Collins. I knew Nico Collins was going to ball out, but goodness gracious, Tank Dell, you got to be panicking on him. I made some dumb moves for Tank Dell. I thought I bought, was buying him low after that week one game and goodness gracious, shout out to PB&J for fleecing me in the subscriber league. Four targets, four receptions for 38 yards, only seven fantasy points. 11 fantasy points has been his high this whole season. I think we're getting to a point that if you can try to get rid of Tank Dell, 
I think you have to be considering what that's going to look like because I'm absolutely panicking on Tank Dell going forward into the rest of the season. And when we start to look at what some of these deals could look like, like Tank Dell for Roshan Johnson, like that's essentially waiver wire bait. Um, we could look like Sam Laporta, James Cook, Tank Dell for Travis Kelsey, Javante Williams, or Sheet Shahid. I mean, yeah, you probably love like the name Tank Dell, but I think you got to consider this right level side. You got Tank Dell straight up for DeAndre Swift. So, <laughs> give me give me DeAndre Swift over Tank Dell at this point. Tank Dell and Brian Robinson to get a Jameer Gibbs. Like if you can attach him, I think that's going to be the best way to sell high on Tank Dell is just to attach him to a piece and then hopefully get that tier off off of Tank Dell with another asset. That's the way that you're really going to be able to get off of Tank Dell. So if you like fantasy football, if you like trades, if you want me to answer your start state questions, we are going live on Wednesday night. We're going live on Friday night and we're going live on Saturday night this week to answer all your start state questions. So make sure you tune into the channel. Hit that like button. It helps me out so much. Best free way to support the channel. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.